and we are heading south on A1A again, and I've got one more stop to make. I want to uh, go by the Matanzas Inlet, which will be the third location, the third stop on my highly anticipated <laughs> history video series about the history of St. Augustine and Jacksonville as related to the Spanish and the French. And there's an important point in the history that takes place at the Matanzas Inlet. So that's where we're heading now. Okay, Jordy over and out for now. So coming into uh, Fort Matanzas here. It's a national park, I believe. Look at these live oaks, just incredible. And I'll explain a little bit more about Fort Matanzas, but just wanted to show it for now. Here is Fort Matanzas. Actually, this isn't the fort. The fort is viewable across um, the river, the intercoastal there, but this is the place. I think there's a little boat that takes people over to the fort. It's hard to see or, or uh, access really, but um, I'm going to come up to Matanzas Inlet now and pause again and we'll talk more about the fort and the significance of Matanzas Inlet. Okay, stay tuned. Matanzas Inlet next. Yep, Fort Matanzas National Monument, if you can see that. Matanzas Inlet. So we will cross the bridge. I'll turn around and come back. Beautiful day today. Inlet, right, obviously, meaning from the ocean to the intercoastal. Once again, I will explain the significance as part of my highly anticipated history of the area video series, the significance of Matanzas Inlet. Momentarily. Stay tuned.
we will loop around here. You know what I'm going to do? I have friends who live right in the area, so I know this area quite well, and it's amazing. We'll take a little left onto Gene Johnson over here, a road I've traveled down many, many times. And we will go up to the point, see if there's any uh, kite surfers out today, or surfers. And uh, this is a cool little road over here. Heading over to Gene Johnson. On Gene Johnson. Be less sucky today. <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. I say. I concur. And here is the Atlantic Ocean. You see the breeze is blowing. Small waves. Looking south, this road here you can see they're doing work. You can see all the rocks piled up. This road has been destroyed by Hurricane Matthew, what, like five to ten years ago? And then more recently by Hurricane Ian, uh, just like a month ago here, was destroyed more. So that used to be paved. It was all torn up, no longer paved. Maybe they're about to repave it. Some houses were completely destroyed in Hurricane Matthew. Very hard to maintain. Here's looking north. I don't see any kite surfers or anything today. Let's, uh, we'll loop back around. I want to stop up at the Matanzas Inlet. <laughs> I'm glad I came down here. This is super cool. Look at the little, the waves. Nice, nice day at the beach today. Breezy, breezy day. I'm surprised there's no kite surfers out there today with the wind. Wow. You often see many of them out at the, out together. None today. This is a low spot in the road right here. It's often underwater when... Oh, this is where I want to turn in over here. When we have big storms, hurricanes, this is all flooded in here always. You can see kind of it's still wet, sort of. Welcome back to the video. Hope the uh, audio is good for this. I got a wind sock on the microphone, but it's super breezy out here, so hopefully we're coming through okay. We are at Matanzas Inlet behind me, and uh, man, it's a, kind of a treacherous inlet. There's all sorts of sandbars out there. It's shark infested. It's a nasty inlet. And the reason we are here as part three of my historical, highly anticipated historical series on the history between the Spanish and the French of this area is right behind me, Matanzas Inlet, is where Pedro Menendez came upon the shipwrecked Frenchman Ribot and his men. The Spanish, as I already explained, marched north to Jacksonville, to Fort Caroline, mercilessly destroyed the French 
colony there, encampment at Fort Caroline, then started marching back home, and Ribot had escaped and had tried to sail home for France. However, he got caught in a hurricane and was shipwrecked right here, out off of Matanzas Inlet. Not hard for me to imagine with all of the sandbars and, like I said, shark-infested water, so that must have been, must not have been pretty. But it is here that Menendez found Ribot, and um, Ribot and his men, they threw themselves on his mercy, but Menendez believed them to be heretics, called them heretics and enemies of his king. And at this place named Matanzas, which is Spanish for slaughter, he put to the sword all but 350, all but those professing to be Catholics and a few musicians. France never again strongly challenged Spanish claims in North America. So Menendez mercilessly slaughtered all of Ribot's men, except a few who claimed to be Catholics and musicians. So right here, Matanzas slaughter, the final chapter between the French and the Spanish. And the Spanish came out on top in the end. Okay, that's it. Adios from Matanzas Inlet, Florida.